What up dudes, it's Gaz, and welcome to another Warframe video. So, today the video is going to be the most Steel Essence per hour in the game currently. Uh, the way that they've changed Steel Essence to be dropping is now it's not going to be dropping from Eximus enemies anymore. It drops only from the Steel Path Acolytes, which will spawn every 3-7 to seven minutes in Endless Survival Missions. They spawn other places as well, but the purposes of this specific farm will be going over... Uh, a survival farm. I'm sure there's other farms out there for different types of missions, but this is the one I found the, the most useful and the most uh, reliable. So, before we get into it, make sure you are subbed to this YouTube channel for more videos like this going up every five days, five days a week. So, all right, so what are you going to want to do for this one? It's actually going to involve, uh, now, now, first off, let me, let me preface this. I don't think everyone in the game should be doing this because this is very tedious. It gives you a headache. It, it's a lot of, it's honestly going to be a lot of time if you, you're basically stuck at your cat's mercy, because this entire farm is dependent on the Smita Affinity Doubling Buff. The one where it gives you double resources and double uh, XP for like two minutes. It, you're at the mercy of that, to be honest. It's also going to be so annoying that, uh, yeah, you're probably going to unequip the Fetch or Vacuum mod on your companion. So, yeah, you basically, so the things you're going to need for this, you're going to need a Smita Kavat. Uh, the, it's because the entire farm revolves around the Smita Kavats charm buff because we're so bottlenecked on Steel Essence now, it's the only way to actually get uh, more than the, the pitiful amount they, they give us in a, any given amount of time. So you need the Smita Kavat, you're going to need that charm ability, and what you're going to want to do is, so here's the general gist of this build and the, the strategy altogether. You're going to be camping in a room, or I guess you could technically roam around the map, but you, every time an Acolyte spawns, you're going to try to force the spawn into one spot. By standing on top of a box, by standing in like a corner, something like that. You're going to force the Acolyte to spawn in a certain area, and you're going to stun and kill the Acolyte in that area instantly. You can either insta-kill it if you have enough damage, or you can stun it with Ensnare from Korra, or the Subsumed ability from Ensnare and Korra, and then insta-kill. So, that's the general gist of it. Kill, all, kill the Acolytes in one spot. Don't pick up the Essence. Let the Essence sit there on the ground until you get the affinity cat buff from your cat. So I'm going to show you me picking up the essence here. Now, I, it is a, be a two-minute clip, but basically I've killed so many... This is 62 minutes into the survival. I've killed so many acolytes. They're all over there. Their, their corpses are all piled up. It's Basically, you need to find a kill zone. Like, I'll just toss their corpses over there. I'll jump on the corpse when I got the cat all excited. Um, that's what you're basically going for here. You want to get a, a death pile and jump on the death pile once you're feeling like it's a good time to do it. Um, once the cat buff goes off, you will be getting... Uh, it's usually two Essence per Acolyte uh, Steel Essence drop, but with a booster, it's four. So once you get the cat buff going, it will be eight per pickup. And then you could technically, if, a lot of people don't know this, if you have the Smita cat buff going, you could actually get another one on top of that, and that would make it 16 Steel Essence per pickup with a booster. So see how I have like 10 Steel Essence drops over there? Once I go over there and pick it up, I'm waiting, see, I'm waiting right now for, to see if I get a double cat buff. Once I get down to like about 20 seconds, you run over to the pile, pick it all up, and you'll get about... Well, I think I, ac I accidentally picked a couple up here. So it'll be about 100 Steel Essence in an hour. Um, I'm going to show you a clip of someone getting more than that in an hour. But that's just because they got the double cat buff the proxy. Like, that's, that's my gameplay right there. Uh, 80 Steel Essence when I accidentally picked two of them up. Then we just run away because I, I had to go to work, honestly. Um, so yeah, here is going to be how good it possibly can be. And then we're going to go over all the builds and stuff. Um, yeah, someone posted this on my Discord server. So this, is, this gameplay right here I'm about to show you is not my gameplay. All right, so it's a you, and you can do this on basically any tile. So we're, we'll show the builds and all that, and other frames will also work for this. A lot of people like to use um, ensnare on Ash, so you stun the acolyte with ensnare from Ash, and then you use Bladestorm to kill the acolyte because you need to kill them. You can't really use melee to kill them um, because you you don't want to like pick up the loot on accident because that would be a disaster. So he goes and picks up two hundred eight steel essence in sixty four minutes. Like, you know, that's that's probably as good as it's gonna get unless you get. Super, super lucky uh, with a um, another cat buff. You could probably pick up more than that. But most people will be picking up about 80 Steel Essence because th that cat buff I showed 64 minutes into my run, that was the first cat buff I got all mission long, guys. So, yeah. Um, so, here's the thing you can do the Force Acolyte spawn. Jumping on top of boxes usually helps. Look right here. I jump on top of this box right here. It's going to, and I look over here. The Acolyte's going to spawn right on top of the Essence. Use the Ensnare. He's stuck. I got, he, he, he CC'd the end of Steel Essence, so he kind of got a shot on me. But yeah, as you can see right there, I, I stun him, 
in the pile. And now, like, that that pile is good to go whenever I get a cat buff. You're just at the mercy of your cat, honestly. And it sucks. Like, you, you might be like, I need to leave, and you have to go pick it up anyway. But, um, yeah, that's just how it is. It's it's not something I'd recommend to most people. So I want to show you the Korra setup here, here for this. And like I said, people like to use Ash. People like to use a, a Exodia Contagion, the uh, Zaw Arcane that comes from Plague Star and the Barris Knights. That does enough damage uh, if you, like, do some damage buffing and stuff to one-shot the Acolyte. Um, but I'd say you really do want to run in Snare, just in case you're not, like, paying enough attention. Because you can spawn kill every Acolyte. Even the Limbo Acolyte, as long as you ensnare him before he uses uh, his ability, which is Silence from Banshee, you he will not cancel your abilities and you can just kill him very easily. Okay, so let's show the builds here. I'm going to show everything. Like, every single build I'm using here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show. Uh, we can, like, I have a video on the Ash setup as well. And Exodia Contagion, you just basically go really high crit stats. Alright, so here's the Korra uh, setup. So we're using a stat stick for the uh, the weapons, like this will buff your first ability of the Whip Claw. Keep in mind, you don't really need much power strength for the Whip Claw. It ba it goes off of a lot of damage mods on your um, your weapon, and also as you're gonna see all the accumulating Whip Claw augment mods. So we're going with um, my Spectro Siphon Subsume or Spectro Rage Sub Subsume from Gara. This is a, we've had this build on the channel for a long time, but um, basically, if an enemy dies within the Spectro Rage, they will have a 50% chance to drop an Energy Orb. Very nice since we're running Naramon Focus School to keep our combo count going for a while. Now, technically, you could switch out the Aura mod for whatever you, your preference is. Steel Charge is fine for more capacity. Um, I do like the Combo Duration one as well. I'm trying to remember what it's called. Um, Swift Momentum. This works on Korra's Whip Claw. The Heavy Attack Wild Speed doesn't really help you at all. But yeah, the enemy... the uh, the aura slot is really up to you guys, whatever your preference is. Um, I like enemy radar personally, just because I can see if the enemies are stopping. Because so you remember from our previous videos on Ophelia, sometimes the AI just messes up. So this will help you know if the AI is all messed up, so you can keep your kills per second going. Um, additionally, pilfering strangled was to make it so the enemies drop life support more often. This will not affect your your drop from the acolyte. They're always going to drop two steel essence without a booster and four with a booster. So that's that. This is just basically make it so it's easier to uh, sustain the life support. Accumulating Whip Claw, every time you hit some enemies with your uh, Whip Claw, it's going to give you increased damage on your Whip Claw, uh, and it stacks up a bunch. But, uh, yeah, this, this lets you run, like, basically no strength and do a ton of one-shot damage. So, really important mod right here. Um, you could probably get away with no Pilfering Strangle Dome, but I decided to go with it. Um, and then we have, like, really high range, 250. You could go 280 if you wanted to, um, with Augur... Augur Reach, I think it's called, which is the last range mod, but um, 250 felt fine, and we have enough we have enough mod slots in here that are used for other stuff. We don't really need the last mod slot for range, because um, if you were to run Augur Reach, you'd probably need to take off, like, I know some people don't even run duration on core. You can maybe take this off for, for Augur Reach, just to have neutral duration, but the range is fine. Um, keep my Korra's Whip Claw caps out at 200% range on the build, and the range of your melee weapon does not get affected. It does not affect the Whip Claw. This is the range on your Warframe build that affects this, up to 200%. Um, rolling Guard, in case your shield breaks. Once your shield breaks, use this and get. make sure you get back into your Strangle Dome so you don't get shot. Because um, if you die when you have the cat buff up, you're going to cry. Honestly, you are. Um, and then we've got Prime Flow for more energy. Energy pool, rather. So it gets us about 430 energy with this unmaxed fl uh, prime flow because it's rank 7. It's funny. Um, and yeah, the rest of this stuff is pretty self-explanatory. It's range, um, range, and duration. And range up here, too. Now, the Arcanes, Arcan Energize, if you have it, going to help it you with all those energy orbs you're dropping from the Spectro Siphon. Keep your energy pool topped off. Prime Fury, this is going to be really good with Korra's Whip Claw, as it does work on Korra's Whip Claw. On crit hit, 60% chance for 100% or 180% melee damage for 18 seconds. So, you're going to be critting all the time with Korra's Whip Claw. So, you're going to be getting 180% extra melee damage on your Whip Claw easily. Scales really well if you're using a Slash-focused uh, Whip Claw build, which we'll be showing here as well. Keep in mind, you can run a, a Corrosive or a Viro or whatever Whip Claw build in addition, but... We're running, and we're running Naramon Focus School, like I said. The most important node on the Naramon Focus School is going to be Power Spike. Melee Combat Counter now decays while out of combat by 5 every few seconds instead of depleting completely. This will let you keep your, your super red crit darkness powers on Korra. Uh, and you will... It, it, as long as you keep hitting stuff, you'll keep like 11 or 12x all the time. The rest of this stuff doesn't really matter too much. Um, I'm sure there's some bug going on with Void Stalker that I just don't really remember. Um... All right, and then let's go over to the stat stick, and then we'll go over the cat build, because the cat build is a little bit different. Like I said, you're not running fetch all the time. Now, here's my... Now, keep in mind, this is going to be dependent on Rivens. We have a video on stat stick Rivens for Korra on the channel um, from a while ago, and that information is still good. So what you want to do here... It's, it's, it's important to keep this in mind. The mods on here 
affect your whip claw. And Cora's whip claw is 25% impact, 25% or er, it's like 33% impact, 3% slash, 33% puncture. So running a mod like Carnus Mandible or Buzzkill is going to make it so the slash is higher weighted and you will be procking slash more often. So you want to keep that in mind. If, if you want to run a slash stat stick build, you want to run other bu uh, Buzzkill or Carnus Mandible. It will make this slash higher weighted and you'll proc it more. I personally like Carnus Mandible more because it also increases the status chance. And these mods are going to affect the whip claw as well. I've done some tests and some math and um, Gladiator Might with my specific Riven gives me more damage and higher slash proc damage than Spoiled Strike. Spoiled Strike is going to be the mod you'll be potentially running in this last slot instead of Gladiator Might depending on what your Riven is. But the rest of the stuff is pretty much set in stone, besides maybe Sacrificial Steel. This is going to be like it, so you're very consistently red critting. Um, with Blood Rush, you can mostly red crit, or not mostly, but you can get some red crits. But Sacrificial Steel pushes it to the limit where it's almost all red crits. So, um, yeah, if you're not running an Elemental build, this is what I'm running. Uh, so Slash here, make it Slash weighted. Prime Pressure Point, Condition Overload does not work on Korra's Whip Claw. No, anyone telling you that Condition Overload works on Korra's Whip Claw is wrong. So don't listen to them, listen to me. We've got uh, crit damage mods, very good for scaling on Koro's Whip Claw. And then these mods right here, Blood Rush and Weeping Wounds. Very essential mods for a slash-focused stat stick build here, as it will push our stat chance as high as possible, uh, and it will get our crit chance as high as possible. So those two combined, it makes it so it's really good with combo multipliers. Gladiator Might kind of gives you a little bit extra crit chance as well. And then Sacrificial Steel, like I said. If you don't want to run this, you can run Spawn Strike in this slot for some more overall damage. But um, yeah, that's, that's what we're going with on this build. And the Riven mod is what we're talking about here. So, like, this the weapons you're looking for are weapons that basically are not very good with high Riven stats. So, there's Riven disposition right here, how high the Riven stats can be. So, something like the Amphis is the highest Riven stats. Jaw Sword's also really, really good. Um, and you're looking for crit damage, overall melee damage. Uh, you know, maybe plus Slash would be really good, too, just to make it so it's Slash where you don't need to run something like this. You could probably run Spoiled Strike in that slot if you had a Slash Riven. Uh, you know, crit chance as well, which are more consistent red crits. And it's basically whatever you get. And the negative doesn't really matter. Well, most of the negatives don't really matter. Like minus minus attack speed does nothing to the, the whip claw. Minus range does nothing to the whip claw. So stuff like that. And so yeah, it's whatever stat stick you have, basically, with your highest stat melee ribbon. The Venari build is not super important, but I'll show it anyway. Um, it's just basically a viral um, a viral bite build. But viral DPS, pretty much. Venari actually does pretty good damage, but we're not really focusing on Venari's damage for this setup. Um, Prime Animal Instinct, so you can see more loot on the map. And don't equip Fetch on Venari, because that's what we'll be talking about the cat. Um, where you don't want the loot to be absorbed from too far away. Alright, now let's move on to the cat. Probably the most important build of all, as you can use this build on other other frames as well. So, keep in mind right here. You can either take Fetch off, or have a Rank 1 Fetch. The Fetch Rank 1 version is 8.5 uh, Gather Radius. So if you take that off you will not be picking up any loot, but it's also really annoying to pick up the loot on the map. Because keep in mind, if you do not pick up the, uh, the the garbage loot, the Steel Essence can despawn, guys. I've had at most 10 Steel Essence drops on the map at a certain time, and they did not despawn. But you do want to make sure you're picking up the garbage loot. I probably should have mentioned that earlier in the video. But yeah, picking up the garbage loot is important, um, so you can have the good loot not despawn. The rest of the stuff is honestly just standard cat stuff. Charm, make sure you have this equipped. Every 27 seconds, a 28% chance to give you a buff. And there's multiple buffs. You're going to usually get uh, trolled by the orange crit debuff, which will make all your crits into orange crits, uh, which makes your core damage lower, actually, because you're supposed to be red critting. Tech Assault. The cat has a 60% chance to not die, and it takes lethal damage. This actually procs a lot. I don't believe it has a cooldown, so it's very, very nice. And Tech Enhance. Increased ability duration for the cat. This makes your... Uh, double resource buff lasts about like two and a half minutes. So really good stuff there. I think it's like 160 seconds or something like that. So when you get a 160 second buff, that's the one that you want to keep going for picking up the Steel Essence. And then the rest of the stuff like Link Health, Link Armor. We don't really have a shield build on here, so this is just going to make the cat more tanky. They won't die as much, especially with Tech Assault. Loyal Companion and um, Medi Pet Kit. You do not want... If the cat dies, you should probably just leave, honestly. So you want to have some bleed-out reduction so the cat... If the cat does go down, it's not like a 20-second blitz to make sure you res the cat or you lose the mission. Um, this will get make it about two minutes. But if your cat goes down, you should basically revive it as quickly as possible, guys. Because you, the cat being down, it means it's not going to give you a cat buff. So 
yeah. The rest of the stuff, you could probably take Prime Pack Leader off of here. Um, but when you melee, it will heal. This does not work on Whip Claws. So you need to actually normally melee to heal the cat. And, um, you know, pr more loot radar and stuff like that is never bad. Because, like I said, it's, it's like a pickup limit on the map. You want to make sure you pick up the garbage loot. So having a big loot radar is going to help you pick up that garbage loot and not uh, lose the Steel Essence that you love so much. I know I love it so much. Um, but, yeah, so this that's basically the farm, guys. Um, would I recommend it to anyone? I'm going to go with no. No. It, it, it is the most Steel Essence per hour, but it's also a giant pain in the butt. I mean... I don't like doing this. I'll and the thing is, like, the, what you're gonna farm some bobbleheads? It's basically just a Kuva farm at this point. Um, and you could just run like Kuva Survival Steel Path or something like that if they ever bug fix it. Um, and you could technically you could technically do this on the Kuva Survival Steel Path as well um, if they ever bug fix it. That is. And you know the nice thing about this is you actually can get resources and mods and all that on any tile in the game. Say you're doing a Corpus version of this. Just bring a Miter with a Neutralizing Justice Augment mod, and you can pop Nullifier Bubbles. And then you can get those um, you can get those uh, Corpus resources. For Infested, you probably should run a um, a Corrosive or Gas stat stick. Actually, I'd go with Corrosive for the Infested uh, to make it where you're going to be getting the, the Infested resources. So that's nice. Um, the thing about this as well is you probably want to have just do this solo because if you don't do this solo um you might have a teammate running around the map and getting all those resources on the ground in another room and you maybe might not realize it and that might eat up the steel essence drops so it's mostly solo focused honestly and here's a miter build real quick if you want to pop some nullifier bubbles uh neutralizing justice 90 percent chance and then stack multi-shot so if you have multi-shot riven um projectile speed all that kind of stuff just to pop a nullifier bubble really easily and fire rate too um because you don't want to, those nullifiers are a pain in the butt for Korra. So that's basically it for the video, guys. Um, farm, farm the bobbleheads. It's the best bobblehead farm in the game, bar none. Um, you know, you might run out of trades, get all that plat to buy bobbleheads, but you'll never run out of time. No, you, you might run out of time. You'll never run out of steel essence to give to DE for tashin bobbleheads, right? It's the it's the true future of this game. Uh, dev streams with like ten skins in them each, and then uh, useless bobbleheads that. Just sit in your inventory because you have no more inventory capacity or decoration capacity in your ship anymore. So, yep. Hopefully you found this enjoyable and helpful. Like I said, you can use other frames too. You can use um, uh, you can use Ash with uh, Ensnare. You can use anyone with Exodia Contagion. Uh, and there's other frames too. Like honestly, like whatever frame you like, you can you can make a build for this work. And there's lots of camping spots. I'm not going to show like every camping spot that I use. I honestly just went to the first. Like the thing is, you can do this in basically any room in the game. As long as you get the Acolyte to spawn the correct spot, you, you can make this work in nearly any room in the entire game, guys. So it's going to just take some experimentation from you. Um, unless I wanted to make, like, a camping guide or something like that, which just sounds, you know, maybe I could do that if I was really bored one day. But um, it's the, the annoying thing is you have to wait for the Acolyte to spawn in the first place to see where they're going to spawn. But usually jumping on top of a box, like that box right there in this room worked great. That whole pile over there is from me jumping on that box. Um, but the, the thing is, as well, you need to make sure you ensnare them right away. If you don't ensnare them right away, they might do something to you, like knock you into the Steel Essence, which would be a disaster. So, yeah, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you want the most Steel Essence, go be a nerd. Uh, and, yeah, I'll talk to you in a video tomorrow. Take it easy. Peace.